Good to go. Okay, great. Thanks. Well, welcome to What's All the Hype. Uh, I got a few people in the room today, so we'll just kind of go, go with it and uh, we'll keep it simple. So today is about the 10 questions that you should ask your commercial real estate agent or commercial real estate broker. Why do I think it's important to share this information with all of us, all of you uh, in the process is kind of get an idea of what it means to be good at, in, this, in this work that we do on the commercial side. And when you're talking to other people in the industry, uh, other than the people that say at our office or you know, uh, maybe you go to a meeting, there's other commercial people, um, ways you can just kind of get to understand people a little bit better and the job that they do, and they shouldn't be afraid to answer any of these questions. And that gives you an idea if you want to get into commercial, that these are the kind of things you would need to be able to answer. And if you know if you can't answer them, or they're, they're great questions to ask, it's a great conversation to have, uh, especially when you're talking to other agents or brokers, if you're looking at different uh, property or assets, it's always a good time. So I thought maybe this would be a good start. And then of course, we can dive into each one of these pretty deep and I'll try not to uh, get too off, off of a tangent, but it's exciting because I always say that if you're not asking questions, you're not doing your job, right? So you got to have lots of questions because you don't know what you don't know. And the only way to figure that out is to ask questions. So let's start with the first question, which I like is kind of, you know, what locations and cities are specific neighborhoods are you familiar with in your practice? So where do you do your business? Um, tenants and, and investors need a good advisor with good in-depth knowledge, right? So specific to the markets that they have interest in. So a lot of you know, commercial agents and brokers have usually a specialty, but sometimes like myself, I'm a generalist. So I have a lot of experience in different areas. So I have specific experience in a lot of different areas and I can help. Normally when I answer with, um, for some people, they want a specific person that deals in only office. Um, I don't do a lot of office, but I have over the past. And if I can be some value to someone, I just got to get an understanding of what they're looking for. And if I feel like I can be some value to them with the experience that I have, um, it can narrow their choices to what fits, you know, for them as an organization or as a tenant or as an investor that has a requirement for a particular asset class or a, a particular office space, for example. So my, my um, answer to that is, you know, basically I'm a generalist and I have a footprint from San Francisco Northern California down to San Diego and outlying states in the Western region where we've done transactions. So we're currently um, fulfilling requirements for other clients. You know, what, what, what do you have in mind or what are you looking for? And maybe I can be a value for you. Maybe I can't. And if I can't, I definitely know some people that I can point you in the right direction. So when it's really important to understand that's what they're looking for and our clients, you know, they deserve to have something that fits their particular need. And these are great questions to ask, especially if, you know, let's say you're looking for someone to do work for your client or we're looking for a referral fee. Maybe the experience that one person that you know isn't enough, you gotta ask these questions so you put them in contact with the right person as well. Um, and that's important for all of our clients. So that's question number one. Um, does anyone, I'm just gonna go through these. Does anyone have any questions about that? Pretty straightforward, but I like to be interactive with this class. So does anyone have any questions about that or specific questions about particular asset classes or anything like that? Okay, cool. We'll go on to question number two. So where do you see the market going right now? Great question. Um, this question is another way of asking if the markets are expected to be moving up or down in the near future. Of course, such information is critical for a tenant or a client that has a purchase requirement um, or looking to trade a property. Um, it really wants, they're looking to see if it's a favorable environment for them to get into, whether that's going to be trading the property or that's going to be 
um, negotiating a lease for them, whatever it may be. And the answer to that question has to be specific to what they're looking for. So they're looking for office space. You're gonna answer them in a way that would make sense of, well, what we're seeing in these types of leases and office buildings in this particular area, <clears throat> the area you're looking in, we know that we're seeing on average certain dollar per square foot on the, <clears throat> the base rent, or we're seeing an increase in per square footage in rent, or we're seeing a decrease or that rents are flexible, or we're looking at the, the answer is going to be specific to what they want to know. And where the market's headed depends, you know, obviously on what they're looking for. So then like a generalist person like myself, um, I just have to know what they're looking for and where, and <clears throat> I can pretty much have that data available to them pretty quickly. Um, but being that you can give advice on the market is just data that we read every day. So I think the answer to this question is really be on top of your game. And the person you're asking it to, they should be able to answer that question. And um, you know, they may not know why the market's doing what it's doing, but they have some idea of where it's headed, or maybe they have some indication of why is like office space is coming at such a bargain because there's not a lot of people running offices like they were before, not in the percentages that they were. Um, <clears throat> we know that for a fact nationwide. Although we are seeing an uptick, uh, uptick in some of the office uh, space, but that's just kind of one particular uh, answer to that kind of market. So someone in this position needs to know what's happening in the market and they need to know the information um, specific to that tenant or client, depending on what they're gonna be doing, right? Trade, lease, <clears throat> um, or purchase. Does anyone have any questions about the market right now? Any particular questions anybody else would like to know about the market? Whether it's industrial, multifamily, office, Okay. Okay, we're going on to the next one. So what is your experience? That's, that is a catch all right there. Now that's one that, um, you know, someone's looking for an advisor and they should never hesitate to ask about their experience in the field. You know, what's my experience in the field? Um, past clients, um, industry served, um, I mean, whatever's deemed important to answer that question, what's your experience? Um, I think the number of years you've been in the business, and this is kind of an interesting theory uh, that I have about it. Years in the business is not necessarily the most important, but what kind of completed transactions have you had over the years? Um, and what have you been involved in in relationship to whatever uh, the client may be looking for. So if I'm looking to ask someone a question like that, you know, wh what kind of office deals have you done? What kind of industrial uh, have you done? Have you been involved in hospitality because we're looking for hospitality opportunities? And what have you, you know, kind of tackled and uh, done over the years? That's an important question to ask because any seasoned agent or broker should be able to answer that question and give you some idea. I find that the best answer to that is given in, you know, I'll be able to give you some references of past clients of mine that I did a deal with, and you can talk to them about their experience and the kind of third party um, understanding, but it's important to get their experience. And the, like I said, the number of years um, isn't as important as the most recent transactions that you've done. And, you know, you're looking for answers like that, right? You're looking for um, a consistently active person a professional in the market, you're not looking for someone who did a lot of business two years ago and hasn't done much since, because the number of years they've been in there uh, in the business has been great, but they really haven't been actively participating in deals in the last 24 months. That could be an issue for like a lot of different items that could be problematic for you being successful and either your client or yourself looking for that, that transaction. It's just really important. And I know some of these are kind of crossovers too, to residential when you're asking questions of, of people, but it is important to ask those questions. And I think we get away from asking questions a lot 
and I think it's really important that we we stick to that because if you have the mentality of, you know, um, not sharing the information that you have, but arriving at the let's say at the party, arriving there and saying, oh, I, I've been looking for you. I've got some questions. I think we all need to get into the mindset more often of asking the questions rather than sharing information right away because, like you said, you know, you don't know what you don't know, and you need to know more than you need than you have because. You got to get the deals done. You got to find your client a better opportunity with somebody who's uh, actively participating in the market and does deals uh, like the one you're trying to help them with. Um, even if you're trying to help them by doing it by referral or by uh, a mentor, that's really, really important. And these are things that you should definitely write down because um, if you get into practice of asking them all the time, um, you'll sound like a pro as well. Anyone have any questions? Hey, Jason, I have a question for you. Yeah. Uh, my name is Ray, KW South Bay office. Um, in regards to uh, dealing with uh, different brokers, with different broker brokerage houses, whether it's CBRE or Cushman Wakefield, would you say there's a difference as far as when you're dealing with um, different brokers from different uh, brokerage firms or brokerage houses? Yeah, I think there's a, I think there's a difference. I mean, I think that um, like the Cushman Wakefields, right? They, they, I mean, they're specialized in industrial space, mm -hmm. right? I mean, they, they, that's pretty much what they do. They lease it out, they retrade, they do all. And if you're looking for large amounts of space and a big brokerage, I mean, those are guys that I reach out to off market stuff and say, hey, I'm shopping Amazon around. What do you got? Because I know that they're going to have something like that. Um, you're going to look at like a Mark Samilla chap, huge multifamily, right? They, they, they're a multifamily beast. Um, they operate differently. So they're not always user friendly, right? They're, they're not always working with other brokers really well. They work internally. So there's a difference to each and every one of them. But as you know, I think as well as I do, that it comes down to the individual relationship, right? So if I knew you and you're Cushman, I can give you a call matter what you're doing and go, hey, what do we got going on here? How can you help me? Um, but yeah, there's there's definitely a difference uh, for those guys. Yeah, I think you answered the question. I mean, yeah, different brokerage firms like have their own specialties or their own niches. Like you said, Cushman Wakefield Industrial and um, Marks and Milchev family, uh, multifamilies and so on. Makes sense. Yeah, I, yeah, absolutely. Anybody else? Okay. So number four question, which I, you know, I think is goes to experience is kind of, you know, ask the commercial agent about um, some examples about hurdles that they've overcome to, to be successful, right? I mean, what's, just like, what's one of your stories? I mean, everyone's got a story, right? Everyone's got a story from some crazy thing they did to pull off, to close a deal. And sharing that information to you, or if you become a commercial, you know, and even a residential, if you're sharing that, that you're sharing that information to show that you can get the deal done, that you know how to solve problems. And the problem solving in commercial is regard in, in comparison or contrast to residential, you know, it's a different type of problem solving. Um, it's, there's a lot of uh, outside the box uh, questions and concerns that come up um, during a commercial transaction that you never see in a residential. Someone's probably going to say, well, what's one of those? Uh, you know, a lot of times we're dealing with a business opportunity uh, with a commercial transaction. And sometimes the financing like we're doing now uh, requires more information from the, the seller on their business, even though we're not doing the business opportunity. Um, so that the bank's comfortable with the loan making it through SBA. So those are like, that's just something where we're not even dealing with the business opportunity, but the bank wants it. So we've got to get involved and we've got to look at the numbers and we've got to be able to look at the P&Ls and, and be successful in making sure that the numbers um, are what the bank wants and helping people kind of navigate through that. So we've got accounting and finance backgrounds you know, in commercial that help us with that helps us be more successful. Um, 
I always share my story. I've, I've probably told this before, but my story was uh, my mom had a barley ranch and it was 1997 and um, she wanted to sell it in Paso Robles. And I said, you know, she, she wasn't able to sell it. It had been on the market for a while. And um, I said, well, why don't we run an advertisement in France and see what we can come up with there and say, we've got a, a farm in Paso Robles. And sure enough, we got an answer, one answer. And the guy ended up buying it, brought out his own, uh, his own vines from, from France. I forget where in France he was, but he wanted to blend grapes. And in France, if you're a wine person, you know that they have certain categories of grapes that can't blend them. You're from the Bordeaux region. This is what you have to grow. And he wanted to blend his grapes. And this is a great opportunity. Came out, checked the soil, got a hell of an education on wine, soil, and water, and how it all works. And um, she was able to sell it. And it was kind of out, out of the box thinking. Um, those types of things we do all the time. And you want to hear about those stories. You want to hear about how did you take that down? How did that work? And what, you know, what problem solving techniques did you put together to make that happen? You want to hear those stories from people. So you get an understanding of how they're able to work with. You, know, you can understand how they share information and um, you get a good feeling from them. I mean, you can do that with your clients and sharing stories, but it's a great question for you to be asking the commercial agent about stories um, and successful deals they put together so that you can be sure that you're working with the right person um, because not everybody is a perfect fit for, for everyone else. And, you know, like I always say, when I get on the phone with my referrals, you know, I've got a referral from so-and-so and I appreciate you giving me a call. Um, she asked me to call you or what have you. I want to see if I can be some value to you. So once you let me know what you're trying to accomplish, and then we'll see if I'm a good fit for this. If I'm not, I'll be able to refer you to someone that is, I know so how to get things done. And so sometimes, you know, they'll ask me questions, you know, obviously. Um, anyway, that's kind of important. Does anyone have a good success story? How they got a, a deal done in uh, any type of real estate transaction that's no anybody it makes a big difference i think i mean sharing those stories we've all been there and the, we've already been in the trenches right trying to slam through things through escrow and things get stuck and you've got to be able to move and adapt right <clears throat> and um as they say crap happens right so you got to be able to figure it out anybody Okay. So as it comes to number five, it's interesting because as we talked about, um, Ray's question was really kind of to this point, you know, do you specialize in any specific type of whatever it may be? Um, some agents and brokers develop a specialized expertise within a particular type of asset class. It can be a particular office class, like medical. That's all I do. I do medical and that's it. Um, some people do industrial and they just do manufacturing. They don't do any warehousing or, or generalist. Some people just do multifamily and they do 50, 50 doors and above. Some people do just hospitality and it's 150, um, 150 keys or larger, limited or luxury. And so you can just, you know, kind of go down the road and figure out which ones that they're specific in. Um, if it's a demand that someone has or you have, you're asking that question so that they know the nuances. Now, what's a good story about that? And I got one. And then I just, this is, I, this is a great story. So a specific demand I had was from a pediatric ophthalmologist. And we were looking for lease space for him for a new practice. So he was coming out of his practice where he was the junior and that he would be done with his time with the practice he was with and he wanted to move out on his own. Well, in dealing with the ophthalmologist, I learned through the process years ago that they have certain requirements as it regards to the room size, right? So what, how many rooms they want and the size they need to be, um, the, the amount of light that comes in the building and 
and because they need a certain amount of, well, it needs to be blacked out. Um, there are certain specific requirements for an ophthalmologist. And so when we were looking at it, we had to be facing north or south with the windows, right? East or west wasn't going to work too much light. Um, we had to negotiate tenant uh, allowances for construction and so forth to make sure that each room was a certain um, square footage. And I forget the square footage, but the point of it was they had really specific requirements. So the next time that we went out looking for new business, we added those to our calls that we were looking, looking for guys and gals that were in the same position he was and trying to earn their business. And we already knew their specific requirements. So we identified those buildings prior to and giving those people a call. Well, we knew how to get that done. And that was a specific requirement that we now have a specialized, I don't know, skill set in that we can do that. So if someone calls me and says, I've got an ophthalmologist that needs office space, we can help out. We've got that experience. We've done it before and we know why. And that's really important to hear from the broker or the agent that you're, you're talking to so that they understand and that you don't have to go on and you know, educate them um, about your tenant too much beyond what they're looking for. Um, and then, of course, the broker can offer you the most value there, too. And, and sometimes, you know, if the, if the agent or the broker is really, really good at their job, even as a generalist, and they know they can't really be of good value to you there, they're going to push you on to someone else that could help you. If they're, you know, any good at their job and, you know, get business by referral, you take care of the people that, um, that come to you so that you can get more business from them down the road for something else. So it's really, really important that, that um, when you're asking for the specialties, that they, the way they answer is really important. It's not that, hey, you know, all I do is, all I do is ophthalmology. That's it. Uh, I don't do anything more than that. And uh, yeah, well, I mean, if you only had one specific area and it wasn't too busy, you wouldn't be actively participating in the market very often, unless you were just slammed with doctors. So um, I think it's really important to ask the question, but it's also important to understand the answer. And you're not looking for a one specific, but you're looking how they answer it, what they've done to become specialized in a certain area. And in, a certain, in certain cases, they'll need someone who specializes in, uh, in that particular asset class. So just FYI, I think it's a really great question. It lends itself to raise uh, to raise question about, you know, their differences between brokers. Yeah. And everyone usually knows who's a player, in what area, um, especially when it comes into larger transactions and the larger uh, square foot deals on assets. Um, you get to know those, those players fairly quickly and, and you should be able to identify them with uh, literal or no, no, uh, no effort whatsoever. Any questions? Okay. Does anyone have any uh, current commercial deals you're working on that you can tell a story or nothing? Okay. Another question, um, question number six is, have you ever worked with a company like mine before? Now, that's a really good question to ask. And the reason you're asking that question for you or your client is because no two companies are built the same, right? No two people are exactly alike. And um, it's really important that the broker or agent can draw on their past experience, but ask questions about your company or your client um, that can help give them exactly what they're looking for. And so obviously you need to know more about their company. In fact, I, I, had, a, I had a client today, in fact, um, that called me to ask me questions and um, I had not worked with an auditing CPA firm before. 
but have worked with many CPAs in their, their offices. And they had some particular requirements um, for their, their office, but they also had requirements because their company is a little bit unique in what they do. So where they were in the building and access to, let's say, freeways and things like that were really important to them. So the location of the building was really important because they're always going to audit different um, clients. So the clients don't come to them. And um, they also had a few unique requirements that we discussed this morning. And I put them to ease, you know, that we've got the experience to help them get that particular office space and it wouldn't be a challenge that we've done it before. And um, it's just really important that the agent or the broker ask the questions about the company. You know, how long has your company been around? This particular company has been around for like 35 years. They've been in the same spot for 20. You know, why would your company be in one spot for 20 years? What's the story there? There's all sorts of unique questions that come from that. And when people ask, have you ever worked with a company like mine? The answer is I've worked in the same industry as yours, but your company is very unique. Why don't you tell me a little bit about it? So I can understand what you're looking for and possibly be of some value to you and representing you to get the job done. Because at the end of the day, it's all about your ability to close the transaction and negotiate the best deal for your client. So if you get an answer like that from somebody, that's what you're looking for. These are the questions you're asking because you're looking for something, you're looking for particular information so you feel comfortable with the person you're referring or you feel comfortable with um, working with them if you're gonna be working side by side or mentoring with them during that process. Any other questions so far? Okay. We'll just keep moving on. <clears throat> so these next, yeah, these next couple of questions are the key ones and it's really important. And um, I'm gonna kind of go out of order here. Um, just because a lot of times, a lot of times in this industry, especially if you're a residential agent asking questions of a commercial agent or broker, I get this question quite a bit, but you know, it comes down to cost, right? What a bro broker commercial agent fees services cost for your client or cost me, right? Or if I'm the client and, um, there are times when the uh, broker's compensation usually funnels through the property or the landlord, right? But there are times when there's no participation um, from the landlord or the property itself. And on those particular projects, the fee that we earn comes from the client. And um, they're lot, far less common, but in cer certain circumstances, depending not so much on um, leases, although leases come up and that's, you know, they come up sometimes if they're doing a, a particular renewal of a, a particular uh, lease, there may be a fee for the, for the tenant. But most of the time it passes through and funnels through the property of the landlord. However, in purchases and trades and things like that, there are times when the seller is not going to be part participating in the compensation of the individual who brings the um, the investor buyer to the table, and sometimes the investor has to pay their broker uh, those services. And so, in commercial. All that's kind of up for negotiation, depending on the situation. And we find it, especially when we're dealing with residential agents, they're not as familiar with that process. And that um, those conversations I know in residential can be very difficult for people. In commercial, it's just the way that business is done. So it's an expectation of the business model in commercial about services, who pays, 
how much they're paying and having that conversation. And so a lot of times, um, if you don't ask that question and you say, put yourself together with a commercial person and your client has someone and all of a sudden they're like, well, this is the contract and you're going to be paying you the, the, the tenant or the, the buyer, right? The investor, um, is going to be paying the fee. And if that's not established up front about what's going on, it can be kind of a surprise to everybody. So the services themselves are usually funneled through and but at certain circumstances. Absolutely, the services can be billed to the, uh, the investor or the, or the tenant, depending. Now, I know somebody's got to have a, a question about that. Come on, we're talking about commissions here. Someone's got to like, what? What are you talking about? No way. Nothing? Everyone's cool with that. All right. On to the next one. Um, this one here, I'm doing this kind of out of order, but I think it, it makes a big uh, difference. Um, do you represent any buildings or landlords? Do you represent any listings and so forth? Um, the idea here is that dual representation, multiple parties can naturally lead to some conflict of interest. And if your client or you are uncomfortable with that, you need to know. So if I represent, you know, if I'm an Amazon um, commercial agent and we represent Amazon, you know, a certain region and someone's looking for space, um, that may see Amazon owns, but they're not utilizing, so they want to rent it out, they're going to be upset that maybe we represent both sides, that we represent and, and, and represent the building, but we're also helping trying to get them uh, a lease. Well, for the right people in the industry, that can not be a problem. For some people, it's, you know, they know how to put the deal together and make it work. Um, but sometimes the tenants or the buyers, if you're buying some building from someone, um, can have a problem with that. So, you know, exclusively doing the buy side or the tenant side versus the listing side, um, the answer is going to be interesting. You know, just watch how they answer the question. Watch how they, they do the work. Um, dual representation has been around for a long time, so it shouldn't be a problem for most, but it can be. So you want to know, you know, I mean, I mean, landlords, you know, how many owners do you represent in the area? Well, if you represent, you know, 30 or 40 buildings in the area you're looking for, maybe that particular person doesn't want to work with someone who has that kind of background. I would say that they've got a knowledge of the inside track and they might be opportunistic for you to do that. But it just depends on who they are, or who you are, or who your tenant may be, or your client may be, for that matter. The thing about, the thing about commercial real estate, it's so uniquely different is basically that there are all these nuances and there's one of my um, uh, guys who used to work for us here it says it's very non-linear so it's always outside the box and we're always trying to sell stuff that isn't like a to b to c to d so anyway um and then of course a huge question the last question you know is you know what about real estate industry in the first place and um, it kind of defines the enlightening to, you know, their commitment to their craft. Um, you're trying to gauge their sincere ability to want to help people um, and what kind of metrics they use. And, you know, just get an idea of the passion they have and what, what got them interested in real estate in the first place. It's, you know, it's a good question to ask. It's probably one of the less of the 10 that's, mo you know, least the most important. But it's something you want to ask. Like, how did you get into it? What you know? What interested you in the first place in this this particular type of business? How did you get into commercial? So that's really the ten questions that I kind of came up with. I thought were really really important for most people to ask um, commercial agents or brokers. I think it's really important that you're asking questions um, when you're trying to do business with people um, in that 
giving them the tenants or giving them the, the investors, it's really, really important to ask those questions. Always on top of your game, always making sure you're doing the right thing and knowing that, hey, I don't know what I don't know. So I need to ask this person these questions so that I can understand them better. And I can, for myself or for my clients, um, I know that I do that all the time, especially when I'm looking for help um, finding assets for requirements that my clients have for me. So, I mean, it's just really important, you know, asking questions is really important. That's, that's pretty much it today. Uh, does anyone have any questions or nothing? It's kind of dry material today, but I mean, sometimes this business is just kind of dry. Jason, another question for you. Yeah. Uh, what advice would you give to a residential agent that wants to get to commercial? Don't give up your commercial. I mean, don't give up your residential business. Mm -hmm. Slowly get into it. Slowly you know, add 25%. If you're going to you get into it, you get a, a mentor um, and get into it, you know, 25% of your marketing, figure out how to make calls and work with a mentor, work with somebody that's willing to work with you so that you don't lose your residential business while doing the other. And, you know, you, you were, and then, which goes to your question too, about like, what's the difference between brokerages? I mean, yeah. Keller Williams is set up in a way that, you know, you got you can do both, right? I mean, you can't, you can't do a lot of both, right? But you could do a few commercial deals small enough to make a difference in your production and, and income. And if you get started by doing it by referral and learning, then you can do it over time. You can learn. You can pick in one particular area, right? Whatever area that's going to be, and then kind of go from there wherever your your referrals or uh, clients kind of point you. But um, Keller Williams has got a nice eight week course uh, for training for commercial. And Keller Williams is also now kind of pushing the commercial brand better than ever, which is really important. We've got a really great brand out there we, we every time i call on people I, I never get any flack for being with kw commercial right they know that we're commercial people full-time blah 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 um so the advantages for kw commercial is kind of nice you know but i mean if you ever, ever have any questions about it just call me and i'd be happy to answer them for you um you know about how to get started or whatever you may need yeah, I, would. Uh, I actually looked you up online. Are you at the 714 number, the 562? 714-292. Got it. Okay. Yeah. yeah I'll, I'll, I'll shoot you a text. You know, it's funny. Yeah, I know. I appreciate the questions. You know, it's funny. We were talking about this the other day about what people perceive, um, what we all do for a living. And I always think that's really funny because there's always some sort of commercial or there's some sort of like skit on Saturday Night Live somewhere. And there's like what people really think we do and then we really do. And the other night I was watching a, a police detective show. And when I think of police officers, I think you cruise around a radio car or, you know, investigating stuff. And there this scene was, and all they were doing was on the phone doing research, right? Hours and hours and hours of research on the phone, on the phone. And this business and commercial is on the phone. Mm -hmm. it's, you're on the phone all the time and, you're developing long-term relationships with these people so that when the particular, you know, things change, you have 20 of these types of people you can go to to buy whatever it is that you now are selling. And, um, but all of it's on the phone. I mean, we, a lot of people that come in and want to do the social media version, they want to do, they want to, but they don't want to get on the phones. And this business is, you know, at its core can be, you know, grueling yeah. Yeah. that's that's one thing i would say if you're looking to get into this you gotta like to be on the phone yeah sure, yeah, sure. i tried to from the, uh, the kw uh, beach cities in el segundo to our our south bay torrance office and i remember um the uh the Uns unsbury team at the uh, kw there uh boy they had a whole wing uh and and they had like it was like the boiler room they had like right. 20, 20 reps, man, 15, 20 reps on the phones, like nonstop, like, like it's like clockwork. Yeah. And, and yeah, that's what it is. And there's some, you know, there, there's definitely some, um, 
uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Safety in that is that if you really want to be in this business and you don't mind being on the phone, you have specific thing you're looking for in a particular class or what have you to start, you can get out there and get it done, but it takes time. It takes time. So don't give up your residential business to do it. Have both for a while. Got it. Thanks, Jason. You're awesome, man. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for signing in today. We only had a few people here today, but it's always a pleasure. I like I, I, and this makes me better. Does anyone have any questions or other concerns? Thank well, you, Jason. It. it was such a great class. Hey, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. We're all done. Have a good one. We'll see you next month.